Hey, I'm TJ Mercier. It's going to be a talk about um, MCG and C groups uh, used by Android. Um, it's been kind of ongoing efforts to update C groups for the last uh, maybe year or so. Um, maybe before I start, like if if, you, if anyone in the room represents a, uh, a partner who's using C groups or something non-standard, something Android doesn't use, I'd be very interested from hearing from you. Um, I know what Google does with MCG and C groups, but I don't have a lot of uh, visibility into what partners are doing. So yeah, interrupt any time. Okay, um, so Android is, I think, one of the last uh, big users of uh, V1 C groups. Now that System D has uh, basically switched to V2 and made it difficult to, made it a pain to enable V1. Um, so, but we, we've started to see some work to officially deprecate uh, V1 controllers, and so this is two listed here. Um, yeah, so the general approach is has been to like split the V1 code out from the V2 code uh, and the, separate the structs and uh, you know, put it in a V1 file, put it behind a V1 K config, and so that you can support you know V1 only. Uh, or V1 and V2, and uh, then the V2, V2 users don't have to pay for the bloat of, of V1. And then you can deprecate the V1 stuff feature by feature. So that's what um, MCG there uh, is in the process of doing. And CPU set is still just got the V1, V2 code split. Uh, but you know, I expect to see patches uh, to deprecate more of these controllers uh, over the next year or so based on the uh, C group V1 deprecation talk uh, yesterday. So, uh, so what is Android doing for this? Uh, well, starting with uh, MemCG, I, we're, we're going to try and progressively phase out support for V1 controllers. Um, and by progressively, I mean uh, leave V1 and V2 enabled for release, uh, and then switch the default over to V2, and then eventually remove support for V1 to shrink the kernel size. Um, that's basically just to allow vendors to deal with any uh, issues uh, encountered from doing the V1 to V2 switch. There's been quite a few that I found with MIMCG required kernel patches, um, but I think uh, we're in a position now to, to enable that. So, you know, MIMCG and CPU set will be the first two, but there's obviously others that uh, Android uses, and uh, those, will, those will be coming later. Yeah, that's what I was clicking. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, so uh, some updates for Android 15. Um, MCG v2 is open for business. There's two ways to turn it on. Uh, it's still opt-in for, for 15. It'll probably be uh, enabled by default for Android 16. But yeah, two ways to do it. Um, you can enable it on a per-device basis with this product flag. Uh, or you can use a vendor, cgroups.json override. Uh, that flag will go away uh, when we change the default to V2. Um, another option that you can use in 15 is to adjust the, the C group hierarchy uh, to allow a split between application C groups and system C groups. So this is uh, basically aimed at being able to apply controls at uh, just for system apps and just for user applications, um, think like sys protecting working set of sysui or launcher or system server. And you can avoid um, basically user applications uh, causing reclaim from system applications and that causes jank. So um, got a demo for that improvement. Um, so then in 16, <coughs> Um, further improvements, uh, we're going to turn on this, we've enabled this feature max activation depth, which allows you to shrink the number of total C groups on the system. So that's kind of a problem because some kernel operations scale with the total number of C groups and the more of them there are, uh, the more time you can spend in reclaim, the more time you can spend with IRQs disabled. And so that can show up as like uh, audio jank, display jank. 
and so on. So this allows you to control that number a bit and shrink the total number of MCGs. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, it's likely that the default's gonna change from V1 to V2 and 16. We'll turn off that, we'll disable that product flag and, um, and that last bullet point, yeah, so it's, it's, it's always been possible to disable MemCG entirely. There's no hard requirement that Android has on MemCG at runtime. Um, so if you find that uh, this V2 transition is a problem, um, first of all, please contact me. But second of all, you, we've got a, a, an opt-out to, to work around this. So it's a secret disable kernel command line parameter. Okay. Um, there are a couple of outstanding issues. First of all, uh, the kernel doesn't tell you how many C group, V2C group controllers are actually active right now correctly. Uh, the proc C groups was uh, added for V1 controllers, but it actually just gives you a completely incorrect number for, v for V2. So if you're using that max activation depth feature, um, it's not gonna look like it's working. Um, so I sent a patch to, to fix that, um, but Tejun suggested to add a cgroupfs file uh, to display this information. Um, kind of the problem with that is it's a bit expensive to track that hierarchically. Um, it's the same sort of issue that we have with propagating memory cgroup accounting and stats up the hierarchy. Um, it's, it's costly to move that all the way up, so I mean, I'm in favor of doing it uh, root only um, but I'd be curious if anybody has any reason that they'd like to, to see C group controller counts like at, at leaf nodes. I'm not aware of a use case for that, but if you got one, let me know. Um, and then actually there's another issue not on here, but uh, basically if you have a very small number of C groups, uh, so typically <clears throat> uh, Android and V2 will have like a couple hundred C groups, uh, one for each user application and one for each uh, system service, so O of like 200, 300 C groups. But if you enable that uh, app system split and only enable depth one and you end up with uh, just like two or three C groups, uh, the reclaim code, actually there's a regression in the number of uh, scanned uh, pages during reclaim and that uh, it shows up as a real big regression in reclaim metrics. Uh, so that's another issue I'm, I'm actually looking at right now. But those are the only two things I know about currently. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it with the migration stuff. Um, haven't received a whole lot of, I've received uh, input from vendors that say they plan to turn on MCG and they're looking forward to benefiting from, from the performance improvements associated with it, but I don't have any, I haven't heard from anybody requesting uh, specific features about controlling memory use. Uh, so if, if you have any ideas in mind, please, please speak up and let me know. Comments, questions? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, Michael. So we were talking earlier about kernel uprevs. Yes. In the field. So if somebody ships a device using V1, say in Android 15, and then in Android 18, they need to uprev the kernel to whatever it is then Android or uh, was it seven fifteen right. whatever it is. They'll have to migrate as part of that uprev, or is there a way for them to continue to use V one? They'll have to migrate unless they only upgrade to like a an a, a, a a lesser kernel. So if they use the Android eighteen kernel, uh, then they would then they would be forced to migrate. However, if they do that, they're also getting all of the performance improvement patches in that V18 uh, kernel that make the V2 upgrade viable. Um, Have you looked at how difficult that would be, though, to migrate as part of an APA? I don't see why that would be different from anything else associated with the OTA. I know it wasn't the focus, but for the CPU C groups, you see that as likely to actually, like is there a viable path? 
<laughs> Maybe. So there's a there's a couple of it, two issues that I know of. I haven't uh, looked at CPU sp CPU set specifically yet, but there's two issues that I know of. Actually, one that I'm worried about and one that I know about. The one that I know about is uh, boot time regression because um, instead of uh, so CPU sets is used to control whether an app is running in a foreground, background, uh, and that different sets of uh, collections of CPUs there, right? And so we migrate processes between those CPU sets to control which CPUs they're allowed to use. In V2, there's no such migration. So you have 200, 300, 400 C groups. And um, instead of migrating them, you apply the CPU set attributes to those, each one of those C groups. And if you have 200 of them that you want to touch all at the same time, that, that can take a while. And so apparently during, um, that's caused, that causes boot, boot time regression. So I have an idea, so one idea for fixing that is just to delay the activation of the CPU set <laughs> controller until after boot. Um, so I, I, I plan to test that, but there's another maybe gotcha, is uh, V1 supports on a per task, uh, on a per thread basis, assigning CPU set uh, attributes, but V2 does not. Well, it does via um, threaded controllers, but when you, you have to enable threaded controllers in a hierarchy which is shared among all the controllers, and that's going to include non-threaded controllers. So I'm not actually sure if we're going to be able to support with C groups the per thread assignments for a CPU set. So The other one I'm particularly worried about is the CPU controller, which we aren't actively using now, right. but I know eventually. Right. Because if we do move to the V2 style, when we migrate something, if something a task moves to the background, we have to then re-proportion all of the yeah. background tasks to have that same kind of, if we want to bound all of the background under a certain limit of the CPU time. Um, uh, same multi-write problem, I think is what you're getting at, right? Like uh, having to apply the attribute across a whole bunch of C groups all at once. Well, yeah, because we have to recalculate kind of what that single C group's portion of the background limit would be. Um, oh, uh, but you could also, you can apply these up, up the entire hierarchy, right? So you could apply this at, at the, the, the level above each application, right? You could, you could apply it at like the apps level, for example. And then you don't have to touch each individual C group. Oh, I just have to read behind you. So maybe we should talk more about it later. So okay. <laughs> I think Michael had it. Michael. Uh, I only have a comment to this uh, statistics. So uh, you wrote that uh, there is uh, there is currently the only V1 file, but I think the hierarchic statistics was uh, is now for merged for six twelve. So that will be there, the hierarchical thing. Yeah. And uh, I think it's the use case is the same like with the root one that it's for, I, I would say for debugging purposes when you want to know actually whether there is something leaking. Uh, yeah, um, well, uh, but that's for our stats, right? It's uh, just for no, our stats. Uh, I meant the statistics of the number of C groups, if I understand. Uh, Right, right. So there's nowhere that's reported in Cgroup FS now, right? So the uh, the suggestion from Tejum was to add a file to do that. Yeah, and right? it's for in a four six twelve. It, uh, it's there's it doesn't it's not upstream right now. Uh, right. Not now, but it uh, is heading there. Oh, uh, there's a patch already. Yes. Oh, okay, uh, okay. I didn't it's see it. What I wanted to say that it's a, uh, yeah. There, there was the second version of uh, some follow up to that. So now. The V2 hierarchies can provide the information about the number of existing C groups or controller uh, states. And is it just a hierarchical atomic right all the way up? Yes, or uh, or like it's at every at every C group. So it's going to have the same problem that our stat has every time you create and remove C groups. Uh, yes, it's yeah, it's a uh, it. Uh, um, it needs to adjust the statistics uh, when you create C groups. So that is hopefully, okay. So I think most systems don't create and remove C groups as much as Android does. I mean, it's like kind of every app launch, and sometimes for forks, uh, 
we, we create and remove these. So um, yeah, I guess we'll see if it's if I if I see it in any traces. I think that currently it has to update all the whole path to the root and the, our atomic uh, update atomic increment. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, I'll, I'll go look for that. Yeah, you mentioned that right now we in Android 15 there is a flag to enable MCG v2, right? Do we do we, do we know if there is if there are any vendors already using them? Well, yeah, not really. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I know what Google does, but I have very little visibility into what vendors are doing. I I, I can't I can't I can't tell you with any certainty. Oh, thank you. Is there any, uh, so you, you mentioned the system and app splits for the hierarchies. Is that, is that going to be generic, something that Android does, or is the hierarchy just controlled by the vendor? Yeah, Android, Android owns that hierarchy. Uh, it's tied into uh, yeah, how the system libraries work. And if a vendor modifies that hierarchy, uh, that's going to break, it's going to break the system libraries. So yeah, they can't. They can, I guess, append, but they can't really modify what's what's already there. Uh, so I think part of the long-term plan is to provide APIs that allow vendors to do the sort of things that they want to do um, without going around this system library to do it. Um, but it's, like I said, I haven't received a lot of input from anybody about what they want to do. So. Like it. So thanks for your attention.